Hi, this is Lorraine Tierney with Chat and Craft with Lorraine, and I'm coming to you live today to show you a couple of coloring techniques. I'm trying to connect to uh, my Facebook to see where I am with comments, and it's not letting me do just that just yet. So I'm going to try a little bit more. Uh, we are going to do a coloring technique that I first saw at On Stage back in November, and I really liked it quite a bit. All right, it looks like I've got us on Zoom. Here we are. So that is good. Hopefully I can see what's going on and we can get started. All right, so let me switch my camera view down to my hands and I will show you what we're going to make. Thank you for joining me tonight. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I love to make cards. I would love to be teaching classes in person. I'm sorry, I'm still trying to adjust this. It's a little wiggly wobbly. Um, I live in New Hampshire and right now New Hampshire has terribly high um, COVID rates. So I'm not doing anything in person at the moment and I don't know, I'm not sure when we're going to be able to do that. I don't know if you guys have a good idea of that or not. All right, let me show you what we're going to make. So we are going to make a card like this today. We will be using the In The Moment stamp set. And this is a new stamp set that is coming out um, with the new catalog in um, January, January 4th. And I really like the images. They're really good for different coloring techniques. Um, and they're, they're nice. They're fun. So we're going to use that. And we're going to use colored pencils. Because I love the way our colored pencils color on cardstock. And the color shows up. So this is the watercolor, uh, the regular watercolor collection, and it has a white colored pencil in it. We're going to use that. And then there's a watercolor 2 assortment that has some more colors. And you can use any color to color on cardstock, but we're going to use white today. Okay, and this is, um, like I said, this is the card we're going to make. So we're going to start by doing a little bit of embossing. Um, now Stampin' Up! doesn't sell this embossing buddy anymore, but I understand that you can use cornstarch in like a little baby, an infant sock, and use that to just get some static electricity off of your paper. All right, and I'm going to ink up my stamp with the Versamark ink. I like to turn my stamp over when it's a large stamp because then I can be sure I'm getting coverage on the whole thing. And I'm going to stamp this um, up near the top because I do want to put a sentiment on the bottom and it's going to be your job to remind me to do the sentiment because on the sample card I forgot and I had to put the sentiment on after I attached it to the card and it wasn't easy. Okay, so this is my white embossing powder. I just have it in a little container and I'm going to sprinkle it on the Versamark ink, which is a sticky ink, and the powder is going to stick where there's ink and hopefully not stick where I don't want it. I do have a little little bit extra. Okay. And I'm going to close this up. And then I would take my heat gun, which looks like this, and turn it on. And as it heats up, it would melt that powder. And it's fun to watch. It turns a really bright, shiny white. Um, but I'm going to say abracadabra alakazam. 
and pull this one over that already is uh, melted and embossed and it seems like I got a little something on it but there you go right it's like Christmas magic I just pulled it back so that paper has a little bit of grainy stuff on it I'm going to move it out of the way and now I'm just going to use my white pencil and I'm not going to um, color all of the picture in but I'm going to color some of it and I love the way these pencils can color right on top of the pink cardstock. So I'm going to color her pillow and I'm going to color, I don't know if you can see, it's a woman and she's on a bed. She has a blanket over her maybe her shoulders and then there's a dog right here next to her there are her pants there's a dog's leg and she has a cup of tea over here and she's reading a good book it's a nice nice way to relax okay and then i'm going to do just a little bit more of the bed down here. Kind of make her legs and her feet have a little definition just by coloring around it. There you go. And you can color as much or as little as you would like. So there she is. Uh, remember I said I'm going to do my sentiment next. So it's easy. These colored pencils um, are soft. They're watercolor pencils. They don't leave the lines on the cardstock like showing where they were. So it, they're really nice to use. I'm going to stamp this in my Stamparatus. So I'm going to take the pad out of the Stamparatus because this is a red rubber stamp that we're using and I've outlined where I want to put my paper because I lined it up already. I just took my stamp and placed it here and then I picked it up. We're using It's Your Day and this is from the Happiest of Birthdays stamp set. And we're going to use Memento um, Black Ink on this. So let me just pull this down. And I like to put a block or something underneath the stamp. Oops, it's clicking on my spoon there. Gotta ink it up well. Make sure I don't have any extra ink on there. And now I'll close it and give it a good press. And I think it needs a little bit more ink. It's not the most solid stamp, but I would like it to come out a little bit darker. There we go. It's your day. And that's the beauty of the Stamparatus. I was able to um, stamp twice and it didn't get blurry. It didn't go in the wrong place. I'm just going to clean that stamp off before I close it or put something else on top of it. There we go. So now, um, oh, I cut this piece out. This is the largest size of the stitched so sweetly dies. That one right there. And we're going to assemble our card. So I have a card base that's um, four and a quarter by eleven. And then this is a piece of um, patterned paper that's four and a quarter by two and three quarters. And it's from that party pack the hostess 
party pack in this paper will be going away very soon, January 3rd. It's a nice big pad pack of paper. And the back of all of the papers is a black and white print. So I'm going to put this right on the bottom, like that, edge to edge. And that wiggle room is sliding along quite a bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then just a half inch piece of the black cardstock just to give it a nice little uh, border, a nice break. Is everybody done with Christmas cards? I decided not to make another Christmas card tonight. I thought we don't need more Christmas card ideas. We can continue with what we're doing already if you're still making them. And now I'm going to put a bunch of dimensionals on the back of the piece we colored on. And I'm going to mat it on a piece of um, polished pink cardstock that's just a little bit bigger. It's um, four and a quarter by three and an eighth. And I want to cover this black ink before I put my hand in it. Just a couple more of these to get off. There we go. I'm going to center it right there. And then we'll glue this on and center it on the front of our card base. Okay, so I'm going to use my grid paper to line this up. Try to get it centered left, right, top, and bottom. I'm going to call that good enough. And um, I thought it could use a little bit of some bling. So these are new classic matte dots, and they come in um, four different colors. Let's see. Yeah, there's white. And I think that's a very vanilla, and then a basic gray, and a black. So I'm going to use some of the smallest black ones. And I'll just do three of them right around my lady a little bit. And um, this is raised up on dimensional, so I like to put them on the lowest layer because maybe they won't poke through the envelope that way um, so that that's how I did that oh Sharon I'm glad you did this coloring technique yeah we saw this at on stage so a lot of us learned this new one and it's fun it's really fun so that's that card then I thought I would show you another card um, a different color coloring on another color and I had some when I was playing with it. Let me see if I can find one. Oh, I just want to show you how the colors show up. Um, this, this didn't come out the way I wanted it to, so I wouldn't use this. But I just want to show you the colors. So I colored with brown. I colored with um, Coastal Cabana. And then I put white over it to try to soften it. But you can see... Um, that the colors come out pretty true, even on colored cardstock. And I don't think other colored pencils would do that quite so well. So um, these are pretty cool. So yeah, not that you would want to do anything with all these different colors, but you can just see that and if you color right over the embossing, you can always um, either use a damp 
towel or like a microfiber cloth and just wipe it right off of the embossing. It will come back off. So I just wanted to show you that a little bit. So for the next card, I'm not going to show you what it looks like ahead of time. We're just going to make it. Um, that's code for, I didn't make another one before. Uh, but we're going to use a slightly different stamp. We're going to use the, um, the woman looking out the window. She's also carrying some tea, holding some tea. My stamp is not straight on my block. Can you see how that's crooked? And I don't, I don't like that because I'm afraid I'm going to go crooked on my cardstock. So I'm using the grid paper and I'm trying to line up this bottom line even on the grid paper and I have my block even on the grid paper. Try to make it square. It's still not foolproof. Believe me, I can still mess it up and get it crooked, but we'll give it a try. All right, in this one, I also need to do up near the top because I want to use one of the longer sentiments. Use those lines in the grid paper. Try to get it straight. And with the Versamark, I do leave my stamp down just a little. Try to get it a nice, solid contact there. I love it. I think it looks pretty even just stamped tone on tone. Can you see that? It's a subtle kind of look. It's really pretty. All right. Oh, I did not wipe this one with the Embossing Buddy first. I did do it as I was setting up, so we'll see if that is enough to help me just get the embossing powder where I want it. I do get this stuff everywhere. Oh, I forgot to put my piece of paper back down. Oh, well, I'll have to clean off a little bit. Okay, and now we're going to do the same thing, abracadabra. Alakazam, and here it comes back all melted. Where's my, I'm gritty and grainy. There's a little bit of embossing powder. Okay, and again, I'm going to use my white colored pencil. You can sharpen it just with a regular kid's pencil sharpener very gently. We're going to color in her pants. I did use this stamp set also on uh, white and color with the blends and it colors very very nicely with the blends also. I really really like these people and how well they can color. I hope you can see this okay. I'll lift it up in a little bit. I'm just on this one, I'm only going to do her shirt and her pants. Oh, maybe a pillow over. Well, no, I don't think so. I don't think I want to call attention necessarily to the pillow. So there she is. She's all colored in. How about her teacup? There we go. And her cup of tea. And I'm going to use my Stamparatus again. And I wanted to have both stamps set up. So I'll just take this plate out. That's the beauty of having two plates. And this one I set up on the side. And I'll put my magnets on. And I'm going to use early espresso for this because I want it to be um, a nice dark color.
color for the sentiment. I'm going to move that over just a tad. A nice dark color for the sentiment, but I didn't want it to be black this time. I thought that would be a little bit too dark. Okay. It helps to have something under your stamp. And now I will put that down right there. Give it a good press. And I think again, I'll ink it up one more time. Whoa, that went a little faster than I was planning. There you go. You're always so good to others. Be good to yourself, too, that says. So let's clean that off before we put that away. And that sentiment is from the stamp set, from the In the Moment stamp set. You're always so good to others. Be good to yourself, too. Um, this is a nice sentiment. Sometimes the most productive thing you can do is relax, and then also you're in my thoughts. So now we'll put together this card, and it's pretty much the same layout, but I'm using the Pansy Patch um, DSP or patterned paper this time with some pale papaya and um, the cardstock that I used was the soft succulent. These are from the new in colors. Okay, and then our little piece of cardstock, a little border. I always use the liquid glue for most of these things because I like the wiggle room. And then we'll pop this up on here. I just thought I don't know, it looked a little lonely when it just had that one layer. I liked it just a little better with the two layers. So we will pop this one up. So I encourage you to get out your watercolor pencils if you have them lying around and do some coloring right on the cardstock. It's really fun. It shows up so nicely. You don't get the lines that you might with a marker. It doesn't bleed through like the blends. So there's a lot of benefit to using these. And then we'll put this one on here. I did play around with um, stamping a little something on the top part of the card, but I didn't like it when I tried that. I used like a little dotty stamp set, some dots, and uh, I think it looked better plain. There's some soft succulent. It's kind of fun to use some different colors than my holiday cards right now. And on the other one, I forgot I was going to stamp on the inside on the sample. I did the happy birthday. Let's go ahead and do that because if I don't do it now, I won't want to do it when it's time to send the card. So I'm using Biggest Wish, which I think is my favorite sentiment stamp these days. And I'm going to take the Big Birthday and the Happy. And I think we'll put this in the Stamparatus since I have it out right here. And now these are clear stamps. So I'm going to put my cushion back into my Stamparatus 
put my piece of paper on top and turn this. I always want to be able to put my paper into the corner, uh, especially when I'm doing a big piece like this, like the card. All right, so now I'll make sure this stamp is nice and clean. I'll put it on my scrap paper. There's no ink coming off of it. That's good. Let's put this ink pad under there. And I'm going to put this, it's a little, a little linty. Okay. I'm going to put this down right where I want it. I'm going to put the happy on top of it. So I'm going to put it right there. And then I'll pick it up with my, whoops, I'll pick it up. <laughs> it doesn't want to come up. I'll pick it up with my Stamparatus. Oh, that's funny. I don't think I've ever had that happen before. And it's picking up my paper. Oh, I think I had it upside down. Let's see if this is better. Wow, it's so sticky. Isn't that funny? Well, I'm going to have to eyeball this. The challenges of live TV. Okay, that's good. It looks like it might be a little lower. So I'm taking it off and I'm looking at the grid lines. I'm just going to lift that up a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to use polish pink, just like the cardstock. And I'll give that a good press. There we go. I don't really need to do it again, but I think I might. There we go. Ah, nice and dark. Let's wipe that off. And now I'll put happy on there. We'll see if I can pick the happy up with the plate. There we go. That's how it's supposed to work. You know, sometimes they just don't work when you're on live. And we'll do happy. I love the mix of font in this stamp set. There we go. Happy birthday. With the pink and the black. Love that pink with the pop of black. So let's take a look at what we made. We've got a couple in the pink and the black with the white coloring and then a totally different color palette with the pale papaya and the soft succulent. Oh, we didn't put any of the um, bling. I don't know, is it bling if it isn't shiny? Is it still bling? We didn't put any embellishments. These have a matte look to them, so I don't know if they're blingy. All right, what do you think? The white or the the white or the um, very vanilla? Hmm, I think I know what I like, but I wonder, I'm gonna put these stamps away. I wonder what you would like. Tell me if you think I should use the white or the very vanilla. And I'll put my stamps away while you're telling me that. I see that Courtney has weighed in. Let's see if anybody else has an opinion. my in the moment stamps back in. All 
I see a couple of whites. That's what I would do, white. I thought the off-white would match, but I think it looks like a totally different color. Yeah, I will do some white ones. And I'm going to do them down on that background again for the same reason because it won't hopefully it won't poke through in the mail and it just kind of draws your eye right up to the top maybe I should have used evening evergreen for the sentiment a dark green oh well maybe I'll make another one of these um, I wasn't sure what to put inside this one. Oh, and I forgot my white piece of paper anyway. So I'll leave that for a sentiment uh, when I know what I want to use it for. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate you tuning in. If I can help you make cards at home, I would love to do that. You can check out my blog at chatandcraftwithlorraine.com. You can go there to get a link to my online store if you'd like to purchase any of the products that you saw um, here or anything else from Stampin' Up! I'd be happy to be your demonstrator. And if you'd like to like and share this um, video, I'd love that very much. I hope you all have a great evening and a great week, and I will see you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.